All who are thirsty, all who are weak, come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream of life, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of His mercy. As deep cries out to deep, we sing, Come, Lord Jesus, 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 come, Lord Jesus. All who are weak, come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream of life, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of His mercy. As deep cries out to deep, we sing, Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Hello everyone, and welcome to the online services for the Cordova Church of Christ. My name is Kyle Sapp, and I'm the preaching minister of our church. This is going to be a different kind of service than we've done for the past however many weeks we've been in quarantine. We're going to try to slow ourselves down a little bit this morning. As a community, we're, we're reeling at the loss of Larry still, and we're you know, we're reeling at not being together. For some of us, our kids have started school and we're trying to adapt to distance learning. It's, it's just a, been a heavy week. And so today, my prayer is that our time together will lift your spirits and hopefully lighten your life a little bit. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a mixture of scripture readings and songs. And after a few of the scripture readings, we're going to pause and allow you space to meditate and reflect on what you've heard in the scriptures. You can talk about this online if you're watching on one of our online platforms. Uh, you could journal if you want to pause and go get a pen and some paper and just write your thoughts. If you're watching it with friends or family, you're welcome to, to have a conversation. I don't want you to rush through this service, so if, if you need to pause it and take time, that's absolutely fine. If you don't end it when everyone else ends it, that's okay. This isn't a race. Uh, the songs will have the notes and the words, so you can sing along if you wish. If you want to just let the music play and sit and listen to it, that is perfectly okay as well. I mean, you're, no one's watching you, I mean, God, I guess, but, you know, that, that's a whole other thing. Uh, but I want to encourage you, do what you need to do today to rest in the presence of God. So how this is going to work is uh, one of our shepherds will come and lead us in a prayer, 
and then we'll do a few scriptures, we'll have some meditation, we'll do some songs, we'll do some more scriptures, and then at the end we will take communion. So with that, let us turn it over to one of our shepherds. Let's pray. Good morning, Father, and thank you so much for being with us here this morning. Thank you, Father, that even though we're all isolated and because of this pandemic, we are still able to gather together and meet. I must say, Father, that I am so tired of, of being quarantined and tired of being uh, stuck in my house. I long for the days, Father, when we can come back together as a group and see each other face to face. It's been five months, and I, I beg you, Father, to help us figure out a way that is safe for our members, for those that are old and young, to get back together. Father, it's it's really hard I, to be in this situation. I, I know I struggle when I can't even hug my grandchildren. And I ask you, Father, to, um, to keep us safe and to give us uh, the opportunity to, um, to see each other where we're not going to be in danger of infecting one another from this illness. Father, we rely on you and we know that you're in charge. And but we are just asking at this point to please bring us back together and help us to do it in such a way that we're following the guidelines of our our leaders in our world. We ask you, Father, to bless those leaders and to encourage them and to help them to, um, to make wise choices so that we do keep safe. And help us, Father, that are older to understand that probably when we first start get, uh, being able to be back together that those of us that are seniors are not probably going to get to attend. We ask you, Father, to um, protect our country and watch over us right now. It seems like, Father, that there's so much divisiveness going on, not only in a political era, but in, in just day-to-day -day conversations. And, the, and Facebook seems to be rife with... with um, conflict and divisiveness and I ask you father to help us to not fall into the easy pattern of attacking one another father I just want you to know that we are grateful to be able to talk to you and maybe those that are feeling frustrated and upset need to talk to you and share their heart with you instead of sh venting their anger at others. Father, I ask you to bless our worship today and I ask you to be with Kyle as he uh, shares a sermon with us today. And I'm so thankful that we, we again have an opportunity to draw close to you. Help us to take advantage of that. Help us to see the positives of, of online worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. The scripture readings for this morning come from Ephesians 4.29-32 and James 1.19-21. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, 
forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. Now going to James. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. I'll be reading from Romans 8, 31 through 39. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life. Is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, that is, in Christ Jesus our Lord. My God and King, how beautiful are your dwelling places, O Lord. And as a swallow longs for her nest, so long I have Blessed is the 
A verse that I keep with me would be Deuteronomy 31.8. It says, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Proverbs 31.10-12 A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Lamentations 3, 22 through 26. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his mercies never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in Him, to the one who seeks Him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord.
Lay your burden down, every care you carry, and come to the table of grace, for there is mercy. Come just as you are, we are all unworthy to enter the presence of God, for He is holy. Lift up your heart, lift up your hands, fall on your knees and pray, for the King of kings and the love He brings is here in this place. We raise our voices, raise our song, offer Him our praise. For the King of kings and the joy He brings is here, He is here in this place. Lay your burden down, every care you carry, and come to the table of grace, for there is mercy. Just as you are, we are all unworthy to enter the presence of God, for He is holy. Lift up your heart, lift up your hands, fall on your knees and pray. For the King of kings and the love He brings is here in this place. We raise our voices, raise our song, offer Him our praise. For the King of kings and the joy He brings is here, He is here. Lift up your heart, lift up your hands, fall on your knees and pray. For the King of kings and the love He brings is here in this place. We raise our voices, raise our song, offer Him our praise. For the King of kings and the joy He brings is here, He is here. For the King of kings and the joy He brings is here, He is here in this place. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Tremble and do not sin when you are on your beds. Search your hearts and be silent. Offer the sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? Let the light of your face shine on us. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and every power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. 
The last enemy to be destroyed is death. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon a cross my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers. It was my sin that held Till it was accomplished, his dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything, no gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. Why should I gain from His reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom.
And now we come to our communion time. This is a practice we take every week to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I am so glad that we have this time together, even as we are apart, even if we're taking it in different times because some of us paused and some of us didn't. The beauty of the Holy Spirit is that that unity and that joining of, of souls that's timeless. That encouragement, that, that breaks all barriers and spaces. So let us turn our hearts over to communion now. Good morning, Cordova, and welcome to the Lord's Table. I haven't seen most of you since late February, and it's been a wild ride. I've uh, spent a lot of time learning some new terms that I was unfamiliar with and adapting to some new habits that I was unfamiliar with and spending a lot of time in emotional turmoil. Um, I experienced a good few weeks of anger and a good few weeks of depression and devoted a lot of emotional energy and thought to trying to understand, trying to, trying to explain in my head that what was happening to me had to be a construct and device of man because that meant that I could control it. That meant that if somehow... I could just crack the code that it would all go away but I'm still here and we're still here and we're still experiencing what for this Gen Zer or millennial has been the craziest year in my short lifespan as I wake up every morning and and read the news and I watch news clips Sometimes it's hard for me to discern what's real and what's not. And sometimes I understand something and I believe something. And then two weeks later, I learn something more and my beliefs change, my understandings change. And it takes a while to understand what can be trusted and what is truth. So what I want to talk about this morning is what is truth and what can be trusted as a believer and as a child of God. What, what I came back to time and time again in my prayers and in my thoughts and in my anger and depression was the fact that I served a God who would never desert me and never leave me. And it says in Hebrews chapter 5 that Jesus cried out in anguish for his path to be changed. And it said God heard his cry. And even though Jesus was his son, he learned obedience through what he suffered and became the source of salvation for all who obey him. And that's what I want to key into this morning the fact that even though we live in a world where it seems like the rules and the procedures and the practices change seemingly hourly, we serve an unchanging God. We serve a God who from the beginning of time as we know it had a plan for our salvation. And that's what I want to key in. On. That no matter what happens to us, meeting in person, meeting virtually, near or far, we still serve a God who has never left us and who will never desert us. So as we prepare to take of the emblems this morning, I would ask that that be the focus of your thoughts. That amidst turmoil and amidst unrest, that we can take solace and 
and get peace from the nature of our Father. Let's pray for the bread. Dear loving Father, we're so thankful that you desired a relationship with us. We're so thankful that your love for us allows you to look past our flaws and the sins that you knew that we were going to commit and still extend love and a relationship to us. Lord, we're so thankful for your son's perfect sacrifice and we're thankful for this bread we have that helps us to focus on his broken body. We pray that we would remember his sacrifice as we partake of it. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we're eternally grateful for your son's cleansing blood. We're thankful for the perfect life that he lived, for his sinless sacrifice, and for his willingness to do what needed to be done in the midst of his personal turmoil and his desire to not go through with that sacrifice, Lord. We're so thankful that his obedience to you and his love for us led him to the cross. And we're thankful for the cleansing power of that blood. As we partake of this cup, Lord, please help us to remember that sacrifice and what it means to us as believers. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good week, Cordova. I miss you. Thank you for being with us this morning. I do hope today was restful for you. I hope it was impacting. I hope it was a blessing. And I want to encourage you to take that blessing and bless others with it. The world is tired. The world is aching. It is yearning for peace and hope. And Christians have that in abundance. We are, we are a joyful people because of all that God has done, is doing, and will do for us. So please, share joy this week. Share hope. Share love. You might get into some disagreements this week, and that is perfectly okay, but do so lovingly. Some things might get heated. You might be stressed. Turn to God in all of those times and know that he is with us and he will guide us. For more information about our church, for more information about our small groups or, or our kids activities, please go to our website www.cordovachurch.com and now as we end I offer you this blessing. May the God who is above all gods all rulers, authorities, and powers. May he hold you in his mighty arms. May he, may he pour out his spirit so that you might be fruitful. May you remember his faithfulness and may you walk by his righteousness and his justice and his holiness and his love. Today, and all the days to come, Christ before us, Christ behind us, Christ be with us. God bless you all. We will feast in the house of Zion. We will sing with our hearts restored. He has done great things we will say together. We will feast and weep no more. We will not be burned by the fire. He is the Lord our God. We are not consumed. We will sing with our hearts.
hearts restored. He has done great things we will say together. We will feast and weep no more in the dark of night before the dawn. My soul be not afraid for the promised morn. You know how long, O oh God of Jacob. We will feast in the house of Zion. We will sing with our hearts restored. He has done great things we will say together. We will feast and weep no more. Every vow we you are the faithful one, and from the garden to the grave, bind us together, bring shalom, we will feast in the house of Zion, we Sing with our hearts restored. He has done great things we will say together. We will feast and weep no more. He has done great things we will say.